So how about this cold weather? Maybe it's not cold where you are. It's cold here though. Little unknown fact, I have a small obsession with candles. This one smells like pine, and pine is my favorite scent, like ever, pine everything, I don't care what it is. Pine all day, definitely. <laughs> I'm even growing a pine tree in my house. To be an exact type of pine, I think this is actually cypress. What's going on, I'm Mikey Alexi, and welcome back to another video. Today, it is going down, it's going down. I'm gonna be showing you guys how I edit photos in Lightroom. This is just my editing process. This is just how I like to edit photos. I'm always posting things on Instagram and social media, and the one thing that I always get asked is, how do you edit your photos? What's your editing process? Do you like to use Lightroom? Do you like to use Photoshop? Do you like to use both? How did you edit that photo? How did you get your photo to look like that? What is it that you do when you edit photos? So I figured I would take you guys through the process of how I edit some of my photos. Here's the photo that I'm going to be editing today. This is a photo of one of my favorite backpacks up at a reservoir near my house. This is straight out of cam, raw, no editing to it whatsoever. Fun little fact, this photo was actually taken on the first pretty bad snowfall this season. Like I'm talking the roads were completely slushed out, you were sliding everywhere. I'm actually surprised that I got up here. Now, I've never driven to the Arctic before, but I'm pretty sure that if it ever came down to it, this would probably be pretty close. Not really, but the roads are pretty bad. So I'm gonna jump into Lightroom and I'm gonna show you the entire editing process of how we're going to make a photo that looks like this in camera to a photo that looks like this. Hoo 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 hoo, look at that, isn't it sick? And it's actually really, really, really not all that hard to do. Let's do this. Now, before I make any type of adjustments, I like to go down here to the Lens Corrections tab and I like to click on Enable Profile Corrections. The reason why I do this first is because, as you can see, the edges become unwarped and the image tends to get a little bit brighter. And I don't want to make all my adjustments and then click on this and then have to readjust everything again. Another reason why you click on this is because every time you take a photo, your camera takes all this information, the information of what type of lens you're using, the focal length, your settings, everything. It takes all this information, groups it together, and then burns it inside of your photo. And this is called metadata, or metadata, or however you say it. And then when you click on Enable Profile Corrections, Lightroom takes the information of what lens you're using, the make of the lens, and then it applies to the image, so then that way, your image will look like what it's supposed to when using that said lens. Next, I go up to this crop tool and I make sure that my subject is right where I want it. Here, my backpack is a little off. I want it dead center, so I'm gonna put it dead center. Yeah, it looks fine right there. And then I straighten my horizon. How I do this, I go to the angle tool, bring it across, bam. Now that I have everything all squared away, I'm gonna mess with the temperature. So I'm gonna go to this temperature slider and I wanna make this image more cold. So I'm gonna bring this down towards the blue section, just, just a little bit, right about there. And then I don't really like a lot of magenta in my photos, so I'm gonna add a little bit more green. So I'll bring that green section down just, just a tad. The reason why I do this is because to me, this adds this really nice icy cold kind of feel to it. Now I'm going to play around with the exposure sliders. So I'm going to bring down these highlights so that way we'll have some nice detail within the snow, maybe a little bit in the sky, and even some in the mountain maybe a little bit, and then we'll bring up these shadows. So that way we'll have some detail within the bag. And then we're going to play around with the whites, make things a little bit more bright here, and then bring down the highlights so we can keep these details. And then now we're gonna bring down these blacks just a little bit. In this case, dehaze is gonna be my best friend because there's a lot of snow that's falling up on the mountain here and I wanna bring back that detail. So I'm gonna bring up that dehaze just a little bit, maybe bring up some clarity, add some punch, add a little bit of texture, sharpen things up a little bit more. And that's looking pretty good the way it is. Now the more clarity that you add, the more color kind of sucks from the image, so you wanna add a little bit of vibrance. Maybe a little bit of saturation. I actually want to add a little bit more clarity, a little bit more punch, a little bit more texture. And that's looking pretty solid the way it is. Now I'm gonna mess with the tone curve a little bit so that way I'll have more control with contrast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a point here in the shadow section and then I'm gonna put a point here up in the highlight section. I'm gonna drop them shadows down just a little bit. Bring up those highlights a little bit. And then what I wanna do is I wanna bring up those shadows to bring back a little bit more detail. And then I'm gonna bring up those blacks just a little bit. Moving on, we'll go down here to the HSL. I don't really like how blue it is, so I'm gonna desaturate those blues just a little bit. And then we're gonna bring down the blue and the hue to have that icy cold feeling. Bring down those blues a little bit more. And we're gonna bump them up a little bit more in the luminance. 
Oh, <laughs> things are getting a little cold. Now I really want to make this bag pop. How do we do this? Well, I don't really want it so much red. I want it a little bit more towards the pinkish side. So I'm going to go to the red slider here in the hue section. I'm going to bring that to the left, more towards the pink. And then I want to go to the orange and I'll bring that more towards the yellow, just a, just a tad. And then I'm going to go down here to the luminous and I'm going to bring up those reds. Make it a little bit more bright. I'm going to go to the orange, do the same thing. And now I'm going to saturate them just a little bit. Yeah, I like that right there. Happy with the HSL, now moving down to the color grading section. So I want to add a little bit of teal within these shadows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the shadow section here, and then I'm going to go over in the teal section here, just so slightly. And then I'm going to add a little bit of tealish green in the mid-tones, just a little bit. And then the highlights, I'm going to add just a little bit of green. Now, things are looking a little too teal, so I'm going to go back up to the HSL. I'm going to drop those blues in the saturation just a little bit. And then I'm going to drop those aquas, bring up their illuminance just a little bit. And that's looking pretty good the way it is right now. Now, I like to play with the calibration as well, so I'll go down on the calibration tab, and I'll bring down the blues just a little bit. And then I'll bring down the saturation. And then I'll bring up the green hue. And then I'll bring up the saturation for that just a little bit. And then I'll bring up the red just a little bit. And then I'll bring up the saturation for that just a little bit. And I'm pretty happy with that. Now that's looking pretty good the way it is. But there's one other thing that I could do to make things just a little bit better. So what I like to do is I also like to play with masks. And what masks are are basically things that you can use to work with certain parts of the image. So I go up here and I click this graduated mask, bring this up from the bottom of the snow, and then I bring down the highlights. As you can see, a lot of the details coming back within the snow. And then I'll get a radial mask, make sure that the invert is not checked, and then I bring this out, and I'm going to create a custom vignette. And I'll go to exposure, and I'll drop that down just a little bit. Bring those out just a little bit. And then now, being that things are looking a little too dark, what I'm going to do is I go back up to my exposure, or my highlights, and bring up my highlights just up a little bit. Maybe bump that exposure up just a tad. and we are looking pretty golden right there. This is the image that we started out with, and this is the image that we ended up with. Now, I'm not trying to be pretentious here, but that looks pretty sick if you ask me. But that's it for me today, folks. If you like this video, remember to destroy the like button. It makes a huge difference. Hit up that comment section below. We can converse about photos, coffee, what have you. And of course, if you have not yet, remember to subscribe. You should do it, and of course, Hit that notification bell too, because every time I post a video, you'll be notified. But I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace. Now that I enable pro, pro <clears throat> gotta start. Three, two, one. Backpack pretty much straight center, so I'm.